Hello, I am Trey Ratcliffe, and I'm going to teach you a little bit about HDR photography. HDR is an acronym for High Dynamic Range, and I'll kind of take you on a full demo today. Uh, we're here at this place called Aroha, which is this incredible retreat on the South Island of New Zealand. It's got some of the best hiking trails in the world. It's just fantastic. I couldn't recommend it anymore. In fact, we're going to go over here into the little yoga room, the Aroha Yoga Room, and I'll take uh, an HDR photo in there and, and show you how that's done. Also take another HDR photo, like we're moving people in it, so you can see how that's done. This is a, a full little nice tutorial for you. This is actually a, a teaser video for the uh, full video, which is super long, and I take you through everything from the beginning all the way to the end. And we go all over New Zealand. We go to the Hobbiton movie set. We're all over the South Island, and you'll get HDR in absolutely every single configuration and you'll have it uh, totally nailed by the end. So the video that you see today, I'm going to uh, take these photos and show you how it's all set up, and then I'll go into the post-processing part, that's where the, the magic really happens, and I'll go kind of hyper fast through it, right? So you're gonna see all my tricks, you'll see everything in this video. And I don't want it to be overwhelming to you, which it might be if you're a beginner, kind of intermediate. Uh, but, you know, if you end up getting the full course, you can see every little step broken down, step by step by step, and this is something that absolutely anybody can do. It's really, really fun. I've been doing it for years, and I find it to be a very, like, fulfilling activity, and I, I hope you do, too, creatively. So there's basically three big tricks and, that I'm going to talk about today. And these are kind of like the three keys that are pervasive throughout the video. Uh, and you're going to see some of them in this video. The first one is this HDR styling. Not just how do I do HDR, how does Trey do HDR. It's not about me, it's about you. How can I help you create your own HDR style? And I figured something out over the past you know, five or six years while I've been doing this. I continue to evolve this technique with new software and new post-processing tricks, and so you'll see all this kind of stuff. Uh, the second thing, and this gets a little touchy-feely, you'll have to excuse me, but maybe you think that a way to find uh, this artistic self inside is through photography, and I certainly think it is. And maybe you realize that uh, you know, life is kind of about the continual recreation of yourself. And one of the great ways to continue to find yourself and seek this, this insight is through creative arts. Uh, in my case, it's, it's photography and post-processing. And maybe you're looking for your own style of photography and you're not sure what that is. You're like, well, I, I do want my own style, but I don't know what that is. But I actually think that photography plus post-processing is one of the greatest self-discovery tools of our age. And through this technique of taking photos and post-processing and trying many, many different things, You'll end up with some styles you don't like, some styles you like, and over time, you'll find this to be an amazing tool to, to make something that's totally creative, interesting, and unique to you. And I think it will, will be meaningful to you in your life in many ways. At least, I hope it is. This is, this is why I do it. The third thing is there's this wonderful kind of new idea of creating your own lens. And that doesn't mean like molding your own uh, glass and this sort of thing, but it's really in post-processing. So you can use any kind of lens to get the shot. You know, there's the two variations that you want to swap in and out. But then you've got this ball of data, this ball of light, this Cartesian grid that you can then take into post-processing, and then you can bend it any way you want to. And you're going to see some of this in the video as well. All right, so let's get started. We'll jump over into the Aroha room and then take our first HDR shot together so you can see how it's done. Now, here we are inside the Aroha room. This is where they do the yoga. And this is a perfect situation for HDR because we're inside kind of a dark room and it's quite bright outside. So, Bell actually has the camera aimed at me right now, so it's properly adjusted for me. But if you look outside, you see it's totally blown out. But the human eye, of course my eye, can see all the texture inside of here. I can see all the grain in the wood. And outside, I can see the ro rolling green hills, I can see the mountains, I can see the color of the lake, I can see all the striations in the clouds. That's because the human eye can just see a lot more than a camera. The human eye can see about 11 stops of light, and a camera can only see about three. 
So to get around this, what we'll do is use HDR. And I'll take multiple shots. I'll take three shots so that we can get a closer span across that 11 stops of light. All right, so let me tell you what my setup here is and I'll take the shots. So this is a Sony A7R and in the actual video, in the full thing, uh, you get to see all kinds of cameras. Uh, everything from the NEX series, Canons, Nikons, uh, you can see an Olympus camera. So anyway, you get to see how it works on pretty much every kind of camera, but I'll just tell you how this is going because there's a few standard things that apply to pretty much all cameras, all right? So what lens do I have on here, you wonder? This is actually an NEX lens. Uh, this is the 10 to 18 millimeter lens, and I still get the full 36 megapixel greatness of the camera, even though I'm using this lesser lens. And I do get a little bit of a black ring around the outside of the lens, but that's only when I'm zoomed all the way out or zoomed all the way in. As long as I stay between 12 and 17 millimeters, I'm okay. And right now I'm at about, I'm at 17 in fact. So I'm kind of close because I want to get the wood around the outside of the window and I want to get all the framing beyond. In this case, it's very important to be totally symmetrical. All right. So what are my other settings here? Um, I am an aperture priority. That's important for HDR because when you're an aperture priority, it makes sure that you have the exact same aperture for all three of your shots, okay? I'm in a mode called uh, auto bracketing, like continuous auto bracketing. So what that means is it'll do um, three different shots at different exposures, all right? My auto bracketing right now is set for three, three photos, minus two, zero, and plus two, which is perfect for this condition. Um, the other settings are, I am at um, F8 and ISO 100. So why those two things? Well, F8 will get everything in focus. I'm quite wide angle. I want to make sure I get all the wood grain in focus close up and the mountains in the far distance. And then um, I'm at ISO 100 because you want to keep the ISO as low as possible just so that there's not that much noise because you know, of course, you could do handheld HDR shots. I don't we need to be using this. It just makes it a little bit more stable, keeps everything close. If your three shots are a little misaligned, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, in the next step, I'll show you how you can auto-align that if you need to. And this is kind of a nice feature, I think, of this camera in that I don't actually have to like bend over and look through the EVF. I can just um, look right through this thing and I, I'm good to go. All right, so I'm gonna frame it up here I think everything looks pretty good. I'll just zoom in and out a little bit to make sure it looks nice. And then I'll hold down the shutter button and it will fire away. Good. Well, I got those three shots and we're going to see how that looks in, uh, in post-processing uh, soon. First, what I'll show you is we're going to repeat this whole scene, except uh, Belle is going to come out from behind the camera and she's going to do some yoga maneuvers. And we're going to see how to do this exact same scene except with moving, moving people inside of it, all right? And I'm gonna keep watching this for a minute because I see the light changing and I'll probably get a few different sequences and a few different shots because it can be different. You know, if you just wait five minutes and these partly cloudy, partly sunny days, uh, the light changes. So it's good to have a few variations to take with you into Lightroom later on. All right, so what we're gonna try now is the exact same shot except this time with people in it, all right? It's a kind of a different situation because they're going to be moving, of course, with the multiple shots. So we're going to talk about how that happens. So this just happens to be Belle Jones, the, the woman behind the camera that filmed the entire tutorial. And she's also really into yoga. So just a nice little uh, quinky dink here. And this is Sam, who's a wonderful yoga instructor and meditation instructor here at Aroha. And so they're going to do a little, little thing together. And I think it'll be amazing to photograph in front of this window. So the key here is to get them totally centered because we have everything uh, very symmetrical. The whole setup is very symmetrical, so we want to make sure they're in the very center. So Belle will start out with a, a headstand a little bit over here, and when she ends up on Sam's back, uh, they'll be perfectly in the center, I hope, and I'll take the shots. So as far as my, my setup goes, I'll talk about that. My setup here is I'm on the Sony A7R, and this is a same wide angle lens as before. And I'm going to be shooting at F8, ISO 200 in aperture priority. 
my three brackets are going to be minus 2, 0, and plus 2. And this will be enough to get all the light that's really there in the scene. Now, one thing I'm going to do, which is kind of interesting, I think, is I'm going to take a shot maybe first without them in it so that I have a, a little bit of a, a background just, just in case, right? I need a clean background. That'll be just sort of in my, my backup repertoire. And then when they start moving, I'll start taking photos, all right? But there might be a little bit of movement even when they're staying still. So I want to make sure that I get them clean. So what I'll do is I'll drop down my f-stop maybe to f4 so that I'm sure that they get a, a clean, fast exposure. Because when you're in aperture priority, you can drop down your f-stop, and when your f-stop goes down, more light comes in, and your shutter speed goes quicker. The other thing I might do is I might double the ISO. I might double the ISO from ISO 200 to ISO 400. Because also remember, in, in uh, aperture priority, every time you double the ISO, your shutter speed goes in half. So that's another way to make sure you get a quick shot and to make sure they're clean. So, you know, if all this is overwhelming you, don't worry. When you actually get the full course and this sort of stuff, um, I go through all this stuff step by step and it's very easy to learn. Anyone can learn it. I'm, I'm sure you won't have a problem with it. Okay, so you guys go and get ready. Bill, you want to throw yourself into a headstand first? Okay, so I'm going to take a few test shots even right now just to look and make sure everything looks okay. And it does. And now bend your knees. And relax as I take your weight. So I start taking a few shots right now just in case. All these shutters feel pretty fast, so they seem all right. Now I'll get you guys to pause there just a second. And I'm going to drop down my f-stop all the way to f4 and shoot. Good, let those process for a second. And I'll increase my ISO to 400, just like this, and shoot. Very good, you guys can finish the move. And while they're finishing the move, I'll just keep shooting. Because you never know, there could be something else cool in the finished move. All right, that was awesome. Bravo. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I'm just changing my batteries. Um, I tell you, this camera is great. It does uh, eat up batteries pretty fast, but they're so tiny that it's not a big, it's not a big deal to just swap them out. And I'm going to do a few things here. So I just reviewed those photos, and I feel like I want to get more of a silhouette. I was kind of like um, looking down on them too much. And I really want um, just to see their figures more against the sky, all right? So I'm going to drop the whole tripod down a little bit. And a lot of this stuff, you really don't know until you start shooting. It's like a, it's a iterative process, all right? You just go into it with your best guess, and then you uh, rinse and repeat until something works. So that's kind of what we're in the middle of right here. All right, so I'm going to I'll drop this down. And they actually came up with a new pose they're going to play with here while I, while I get started. So you guys get in position for that new pose. And the sky outside is amazing right now. It's these crazy clouds. It's changing every, uh, every few minutes. A little further back, Sam. The center point. Uh, there you go. Okay, hold on. I gotta make sure I'm perfectly centered. Oh. Nothing worse than the lame tripod leg. So there's, there's one of these modes in here that's really handy because when I look through the viewfinder for this EVF, um, if I keep pressing up, it goes through different modes and one of them has this sort of Luke Skywalker um, running the X-wing down the trough in the uh, Death Star scene. So I, I can use all these little things to make sure I'm perfectly centered and perfectly level with the horizon because when you're using a wide angle lens like this, it's very important. Otherwise, um, your lines might get all, all screwy, okay? Which I don't always mind, but in this one, I do want them straight. Okay, so I'm at F8, ISO 200. Let me just take a sample shot here. Everything looks good. 
Okay. Perfect. Hold it, hold it. I'm going to drop my ISO down. I'm going to drop my f-stop down now. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I think I got it. All right, and let's repeat. Actually, you guys drop out of the frame for a second. I want to get a clean shot of that background while it looks so amazing. Let me see here. So let me drop it back to... I'll set it to F11 just to make sure we get the whole room and everything, okay? Good. And actually, let me redo that. Not just F11, but I'm going to also get my ISO super low, okay? I'll set it to ISO 100. Good. The shutters take a little bit longer, but I'm on a tripod. We're in no hurry. Everything's okay. So we're still experimenting here, both with shots and poses. They're going to do something as far as we know, never been attempted. <laughs> a double toe touch stag. Stag pose, is that what it's called? All right. Yes. All right, here we go. Oh, there's some sun hitting this mountain back here too, so that'll add a little bit of drama. They're all worried about the poses. I'm worried about the light. <laughs> so after I make sure their feet touch, I'm going to run back over and take the photos. All right, so Belle's getting in position. Here goes Sam. Time. You're two inches apart, one inch apart, touching, touching. Okay, good. Feel the pressure there? Good. Whoop. Okay, hold it for 30 more minutes. <laughs> okay, come out, come out, release, release. Excellent. All right, here we are in Lightroom and let's work on those photos that we just took. So you can see I have a whole collection of different photos here that uh, were taken in there. These are the three photos um, without anyone in them. Okay, one, two, three, that was the minus two, zero, and plus two. And then if I cycle through here, you'll see these are the ones with uh, Sam and Belle in them, all right? so. We're going to work on all these, and if you're watching the free one on YouTube, um, you know you'll see me go all the way through this one. You'll see all the all the tricks and that kind of stuff. And then if you actually, you know, ended up getting the full thing with all the different um, HDR techniques and uh, you know over a dozen different situations, then uh, you'll get to see this one as well. You'll get to see me edit that one as well with the people in it. All right. And once again, I want to warn you. Uh, <laughs> that it, you're going to see me go really super quick as I go through some of these moves and show you some of these tips and tricks as I kind of rocket through Lightroom and Photomatics and Photoshop and everything. But, but don't worry, you know, as you take your time on the full course, you see me go through each step very, very slowly. So it's great for beginners and intermediate people. And honestly, anyone can do this kind of stuff. So I mean, don't be scared by how quick I go through this because, uh, you know, this will be like nothing to you. All right, so let's uh, let's hop into it. We'll start here with this one. So here we go: the dark one, the medium one, and the bright one. So before we start going into Photomatics, let's do just a few little corrections here. I'll jump into the Develop module. I'll hit D there. Let's not mess with any of that other stuff. We'll come back in here later. Um, but let's go down here to the Lens Corrections. Okay. So let's just go to the brighter one. It's a little bit easier to see. Um, I'll remove the chromatic aberration and we'll enable profile co uh, corrections. You see it kind of pop uh, a little bit better with fixes with the, the lens stuff. I'm going to do a little upright action here. I'll hit, click auto. I'll zoom in a bit. And let's just uh, do a little bit of cropping right here. Let's get it nice and in the middle. Let's tighten it down a little bit. Let's get the subject matter kind of right in the middle. All right. We don't need too much uh, framing space there. There we go, something like that. Very cool. So now that we have that done, I'm gonna command click on these and I'll auto sync those changes across all of these. Okay, yeah, we do want the crop. Uh, we want all the lens corrections on. We want all that stuff going on. So we'll say synchronize. Okay, that'll jam it across those. And if you are new to HDR, then you probably just uh, be interested in knowing this is what the camera can get at minus two. You can see the outdoors is perfectly exposed. And on the plus two, the indoors is nicely exposed. And 
wouldn't necessarily say perfectly exposed, but it's nicely exposed. And of course, this is a nice thick RAW file, and we can pull out all kinds of light information that you don't even see right here because it does render quite flat the first time it comes into Lightroom. But you can see the outdoors is extremely blown out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to now take these into Photomatics. Now, these came out of the Sony A7R, which I don't think Photomatics currently supports. It probably will by the time you're actually watching this. But I'm going to go ahead and export these uh, with one of my presets, which is an idea. Okay, it's sort of dumping this into my, my working space. It's exporting them all as JPEGs. And then we're going to take all these JPEGs and drop them into Photomatics. Okay, popping over here to Bridge, we've got these three photos. We'll drop them into Photomatics and start processing them. All right, um, we were pretty well aligned. We'll leave aligned source images on, taken on a tripod. We will go ahead and reduce the noise. Um, we'll amp this up to 100% and reduce the CA and say align and merge to HDR. All right, boom shakalaka, here we go. We are in Sweet Lady Photomatics and you can see uh, we already have a version here that's combined them all into you know, a fairly serviceable HDR image. Don't forget that what comes out of Photomatics will not be our final image. There's some other kind of finishing touches we're going to do. So you don't just spit it into this program and spit it out, although you could if you're just getting started. This would be more than good enough for most people, but I'll show you how to do a little bit extra as well. So what you're seeing over here, these are like uh, Trey's presets, okay? We have some Photomatics presets that we sell on the site. And I use this just sort of for quick reference, right? When I get in, I look at all these different um, HDR algorithms and I just flip through them because sometimes they just don't work on some photos. Sometimes they work great. It, oops, it totally depends on your situation. All right. And so I kind of use this as sort of idea generation just to look at different things. There's many different versions. See, I shouldn't have clicked on this one. It says Mega Extreme Do Not Click, but I got to click on it every time just to see what happens. There's all kinds of different versions. Here's Bob Ross has not yet left the building. But in this case, I think we're going to go here with uh, Finding Uncle Remo, all right, which is an obscure reference to both Finding Nemo and Napoleon Dynamite. So then we have all these sliders over here. Let's have, amp up the color a little bit. It's different with every situation. Let's play with the strength and see what happens. And remember, if you turn on that one special thing inside the preferences, you get to see live what happens as you move the slider around. Let's play with tone compression here. Let's pull that up a little bit. Detail contrast. This will get rid of some of the grittiness that might be in there. Smoothing the highlights will take care of that daylight area so it doesn't seem blown out. Remember, the horizon should be sort of the cutoff area between what's dark and what's bright. What's above the horizon in the daytime should always be at least... 20 to 50% um, brighter than what's below. Photomatics otherwise will get confused and think everything is equally lit, which you do not want. Uh, the white point will get out of, rid of any blown out areas like those blown out areas in the clouds. But good, I think this is a pretty interesting um, version here. Let's play with, whoops, let's play with a uh, micro smoothing here, see what we got. All right, that's adjusting some of the, the grittiness there on the inside of the frame. Everything looks all right. This isn't a condition where we need to play with some of these other ones like in other photos um, throughout the tutorial. So we'll say apply, and then we'll have the first version ready to play with. Okay, here we come into the finishing touches. Let's do some medium sharpening here, and we'll say done. All right, then I will close it, and I will save it to the processing directory. Okay, so let's jump over to the processing directory and do a little cleanup. So these are the three that we exported out of Lightroom. They're still highlighted. I'll hit delete to get rid of them. And this is our Photomatics version. So let's go back here into Lightroom and we'll pick one of these exposures and we'll just make this look as, as good as we can. All right, so let's go here. There's a number of different, uh, we have some Lightroom presets as well, like some HDR presets and so on and so forth. They'll give you lots of different looks over here. But I'll do this one manually. Uh, let's drop down the highlights and the whites, increase the shadows and the blacks, increase the clarity and the vibrance, and last the contrast. That's a little poem I do every time I come in, <laughs> into Lightroom because I keep clicking the same things over and over again. So you can see that did quite a bit. If I go back and forth, you can see before and after, before and after. That's just a few sliders. Sweet, sweet Lightroom. Let's get a little bit more even on this outside area. 
Okay, so let's increase the, uh, the shadows and the blacks even more to pull in some of this light from the outside. Wonderful, isn't it? That feels really nice. Very, very good. And if the outside is still a little dark, if we're getting a bit of vignetting, we can just drop this one out there. Okay, let's make this one here. This is a uh, one of the new vignetting tools. And it, as I move around the exposure, it's going to increase what's on the outside. Okay, and I can always flip it around here with the invert mask, and that will be what's on the inside. Okay, we don't want to do that, of course. We're working, we're working on the outside bit here. Okay, let's just keep the outside bit nice and like this. Let me increase the clarity like a bit because I do like the grittiness of the wood a little bit. All right, there we go. Very nice. Okay, so that's an interesting version right there. And let's say uh, close this. Let's keep going through here to see if there's anything else we need to adjust. Uh, let's look at the tone curve. Um, let's make a little bit of an S curve. This makes it have a little bit of a nice contrast. We pull down the lower half there, increase this part here. That makes it a little bit more punchy. All right. Noise reduction. Let's jam that a little bit. A little noise, little luminance, a little color. All this stuff is already checked. Um, this is another way to do the vignetting, of course, as well. Never go this direction. That's a little too, uh, you know, getting a glamour shot in the mall in the 80s. Just don't, just resist the temptation to go for the white vignetting. Um, but we'll bring in a tiny bit of drama on the outside there to counteract what we did before. Good. All right, so that feels pretty good. So we're going to export this as an idea. Okay. Because remember, in this step, we're sort of generating different ideas, all right? We're not working on a final photo yet. And it's a lot of this HDR styling technique that we're gonna be talking about is that by creating many different ideas or many different versions of a shot, you export them all, you pile them up. You can see already, if we jump here into Lightroom, we've got two versions here. This is a bit of a simple one. But you can see they're both two different interpretations of that same shot, okay? We're not being judgmental yet. We're not saying one is good and one is bad. But you basically make many different versions of a shot, and then you combine them all into your very own. That way you are assured to have a totally unique look. And this is something that is talked about again and again and again throughout this series. So let's try one more thing here. Let's just uh, completely reset this one and just try a few different um, interpretations over here. Uh, these are some different... Um, uh, presets over here that we can play with and just get lots of different looks. Um, this sort of gives it a red inside. This is the dramatically shaven chippy, gives it sort of a different sort of a look. Uh, Pinky went to market, uh, does something similar. Uh, the roller will make it look maybe a little bit more blown out with, with some nice look on the inside. And there is something nice about the way this wood has been cross-processed here. Some of these presets, uh, what they do is they really push the, uh, the edges of the split toning. And split toning pushes the whites in one direction and the blacks in another. It's really nice cross-processed looks. That's looking interesting. So as I roll over these, I'm just looking at the presets, uh, what the presets do up there in the little preview window. Yeah, so this one has some nice aspects to it. Let's click on Sunday alone time, and then let's use it as a starting point and really increase the exposure. I'm just looking on the outside here. What colors are coming through the outside? Not bad. It's an interesting kind of feel to it. Let's go back to the roller. All right, and let's play with the outside colors here a little bit more. And let's warm it up a little bit here with the temperature, warming it. Good. So that feels kind of nice there. Excellent. Okay, so let's go and export this as another idea. Okay, use a unique name here so they don't overlap one another. Okay, now let's jump over into Bridge. All right, now is where sort of this symphonic uh, period of the post-processing begins, all right? And this is kind of where the real artistry takes over. So I'm gonna select all three of these and I'll say Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. There's many ways to get these things into, uh, into Photoshop. I think this is one of the most convenient. If you saw that other sh shot that was in there just kind of hanging out uh, before, before this in Photoshop, I just finished another tutorial that's part of this about um, extreme noise reduction. 
Okay, so here we go. And you can see that, let me pull over my, my layers uh, palette here. All right, get into the right full screen mode. You can see that things are not really properly aligned. They're all over creation. So we're gonna select all three. I'll use my hotkey to auto align. I'll hit enter. This will line everything up uh, perfectly, just like that, good. All right, let's get a nice inside crop. Let's get this thing going good. Oops, okay, let me pull it in here. Just like this, pull this down, something like this. Get it nice and centered. And this shot symmetry is very important. There we go. Enter, very nice. Good, okay, so this is a good starting point right here. If we pull this over, see the top one is what came out of Photomatix. Okay, I don't usually do this. I'll just roll for this case. That's what came out of the Photomatix one. And these were two ideas that came out of um, the Lightroom experimentation. Okay. So let's take this one, put it underneath. And now what we'll do is we'll combine these two layers into one. Okay, so I'll create a layer mask, pick my brush. I get my brush a little smaller. Let's start 32% is just fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna toggle back and forth to see what's underneath, okay? So there's things that I like underneath even more. So let's let's go into the mountainy area. You can see there's incredibly detailed. This is the photomatic one. You can even see the sheep in the field out there. Uh, wonderful, isn't it great having a 36 uh, megapixel file to work with? First I thought, I don't need that many megapixels. And then when you got them, you're like, oh yeah, ride the megapixel pony. So here we go. We're gonna take, um, I like the mountains uh, that came out of the Photomatix one even a little bit better. I like the contrast here. Uh, that feels kind of nice. So we'll pick the brush. And every time I brush through, I'll be doing another 30%. Okay, just brushing through, pulling in the more contrasty mountain. Brushing through, pulling in the greener mountain. It's the middle of summer down here. So of course there's nice green down there. Getting a few more golden tones here in the Lightroom version. Sometimes it's something that can happen with Photomatix is that it does mute um, some things and brighten others. It's a bit random. It's like just jamming a shirt into a tie-dye machine in the 70s. You never know what's gonna come out of there. And my goal with Photomatix is not to make the photo look 100% perfect, but it's to make it look interesting, give me ideas and sort of a starting palette, sort of an amuse-bouche for the final photo. All right, so that's coming along. I like that background more. Maybe we will lighten up that lake just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of that brighter aquamarine sheen. I love that cornflower blue color there. Good, okay. Now we've got kind of two different decisions we can make here with the, the color of the, the wood grain, okay. One of them is sort of this deeper red color. That's what came out of Photomatix. The other one is sort of this lighter pine color, okay? Again, it's our decision, you know, it's our world. Uh, these are happy little dead trees that we get to play with, so we don't have to be judgmental. We can, we can mix and match as we please. So I think I'll do a little mix between the two. All right, so I'm gonna paint through, get a little mixy mix of the two, okay? So you get sort of your own unique color, your own unique version of them. All right, so you can see what's happening with our layer mask here. It's starting to go a little cray cray. That's all right, that's, um, that's what this photo is telling us to do. So we're gonna combine these into one, bam. Okay, then we have this crazy one, okay. Um, there's a few different things we could do here. Let's just try it. I'm gonna duplicate it, move it to the top. We're just playing, okay. So let's change the blend mode to see what happens. What happens if we go to a, a lighten? or an overlay, um, or a soft light, or a hard light. So something interesting was happening here with the overlay, especially with the outside. Okay, now the inside's totally blown out. Let's ignore that for a minute. But if we just look at the outside, I like how we have sort of this deep red, this just movie theater feel, right? It's like we're inside of a movie theater of nature and the earth in this room, wonderful. So this darkness around the outside, the inside of the frame is just, you know, glowing, unbelievable. This part is just blown out. So I think there's something special here. Let's move this opacity slider up and down. Of course, we don't have to go for the full Monty at 100%. We can, we can play with it at our will. 
So I have an idea here, all right. And you're seeing me edit this for the first time, by the way. This isn't like some Julia Child uh, cooking demo from the 70s on PBS where you know exactly how the stuffed turkey is going to turn out. I don't know. We're stuffing this turkey together. It might be a turkey too, by the way. So let's make a layer mask here and pick a brush. And now we're going to mask through and we're going to pull in 100% of that good sky. Oh, yeah, look at that. Very nice. Ooh, it almost got a little too dark there on the ground, didn't it? I almost feel like that's a little too dark. Let's be a little more careful here. I'm going to shift click. You know, when I shift click, of course, it draws a straight line between all these things. Okay, so I'm in X to switch my brush back over to the to the white. Let's pull this down, pull the scrubber down here. Let's brighten up this ground a little bit. Just let's bring in some of those brighter summery tones down here. What happens with the water? That's a little too white. What about the sky? Yeah, keep that sky nice and bright. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. Pretty good. Very good. Let's increase this a little bit more. I do, yeah, let's increase this a little bit more like that. And we will take this brush, bring it to about 10%. Just kind of rub this around the outside a little bit here. Oops, let me switch back to black here. There we go, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, in here a little bit, add some texture in here, reduce the glow. Good, coming together quite nicely there. Interesting, isn't it? Good, so let's combine this into one. Very nice. Let's do a few more things, all right? Um, let's just see what it might be like if we had a bit more texture to the wood, okay? Now this is sort of a super advanced technique. I think this is one of the last tutorials that we do. But let's go into uh, Filter, Render, Lighting Effects, all right? We're gonna grab one of our um, crazy lighting effect tools here. You can see what's already happening because this is sort of left over from my previous settings. You're like wondering, whoa, you know, what's what's giving it that that rich texture? Okay, what's happening is that normally none is on here. Okay, so that when we have this sort of spotlight tool, right, we get to have the uh, spotlight move it around. We get to angle it however we want to. Okay, it's our own little playroom. Okay, you got to get to relight a situation. Remember, the light is yours to bend to your will. All this light is really there. We're just emphasizing and de-emphasizing different bits and pieces of it. All right. But let me go to make this thing bigger. All right. Like this. So we're just getting this sort of this sort of little bit off center. Let me twist it around too. Okay. Let's twist it around. So it's straight up and down. There we go. Yeah. So you can actually change the texture down here from red, okay, to green. And this is basically means that the light is only going to be hitting those exact tones. So if you look at what's happening down there in the wood grain, it's unbelievable. It's so cool, isn't it? So let's just say, let's just say we, we think it's interesting. We're just experimenting, right? We just play. And that's the point of all of this. It's just to play and have fun like a child. You know, you're not going to break anything. You know, when we become serious grown-ups, we forget how to play. Nothing bad's going to happen. Okay, so let's take, uh, so we kind of have the original one here, and then we have this crazy textury one here, all right? And there's many things we can do here. We can take the crazy textury one up to the top, and we can try a few different uh, blend modes. Like you can see even just the lighten, okay, what it does to the floor. It makes the floor really crazy textury. Of course, you don't have to do 100%, even if you dial it down. So like, let's say we want a stronger texture in the floor. Let's zoom in here, okay? So this is it without any texture. And I can just slide this up, and the ground gets more, more texture and more gritty. So if you're into gritty HDR, this is a really cool way to do it, all right? It starts to remind you that there's shades of gray. You know, what is sharp? What is not sharp? Um, it's all somewhat fungible, okay? So let's let's make it a little bit textury here, all right? Kind of gritty, and let's um, let's duplicate the ungritty one, move it to the top. Oops, right up there to the top. Now everywhere that I brush through, I'll be getting a little bit more grit, okay? A little true grit, all right? Or fictional grit. 
<laughs> so brush here, and I'll brush through maybe 50%. Just get some of that wood there. That's nice. Get some, get some more texture in that wood there. Very nice. Right here. Maybe we have more texture on the wood on the inside, less on the outside, smoother on the outside. Let's get some of it here too. Very nice. Excellent. Looking good. You know, a little bit more selective texture, maybe a little bit more here on the red area. I like how it goes out to the black around the outside. Zoom out. Good. Zoom in a little bit here. Very nice. Okay. So let's combine all this into one. Now let's play with some of the Nick effects and see what we get. Let's duplicate these. I always like to have a few duplicate backgrounds just in case. You notice that I'm constantly. Um, flattening my layers down into one because I like to make a decision and then stick with it. I don't save the original PSD file. Um, I just go for it. Um, and I erase all my undos and I save it and I'm done. There's a whole psychological study on why this is actually an interesting way to work. Um, so anyway, here we go. These are some of my favorites inside of uh, Nick um, ColorFX Pro. So tonal contrast. This does something really nice. So as I scrub this thing back and forth, you can see what it's doing. It's adding some nice definition, especially to the outside of those mountains. Okay, so let's do that. And remember, we're just constantly creating new ideas, new versions. The idea is not that we want to do 100% of everything across the whole photo at the whole time. We're pinching and pulling and adjusting the light and bending it to whatever the photo is telling us, however we're speaking to the photo, however we're feeling at the time. And if I were to process this photo tomorrow or the next day, I might be in a different mood. Um, I might have different things on my mind. I might have different things I want to experiment with. So it would never come out the same way. You're like a chef making a dish. And then once you get to learn to master these tools, really, you can let them float into the background and let your right brain surf across the top. So I'm going to pick my brush here. And underneath, we have the, the more textury uh, Color FX Pro one. So I'll pick my brush 50%. And every time, I, whoops, I forgot to make my layer mask. That was Bush League Radcliffe, Bush League. Actually, I do that all the time. I can't tell you how many times I forget to put a mask in before I start doing that sort of thing. Cool, brush through. Yeah, I like what's happening back there. That's really nice. One day while we were here, um, we took a boat from here over there and went on this wonderful 16-kilometer uh, hike back through there with all these lakes and everything, just beautiful. And came back to this room to do yoga that evening. Um, really, it's a great place. I couldn't. Uh, if you're looking to come to uh, South Island of New Zealand and looking for a good good way to do it and see some of the most amazing hiking trails around the world, this is the way to do it. All right, let's get rid of this temperature control. Ain't nobody got time for that. So there's a few ways to do it. We'll try the content aware. Um, let's just see how it does. You never know. Bam. Mm, oh, not so great. So let's pick the, uh, the clone stamp tool, make this as an anchor, generate to 100%. Usually I have to make my anchor right on a line. Okay, so that because that's easier to line up right when I start painting again. So right on the line there, and then paint through like that. Good. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and keep this tool going here. Pick a uh, clone stamp, make this a source, and then get rid of this this plug thing too. Okay, so it just looks a little nicer. Good. All right, that's looking really good. Now let's do one more trick. I'll do this the super fast way, okay? Um, doop, doop, and we'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. What we want to do here is create a bit of a glow. Okay, so we're going to Gaussian blur the heck out of this thing. So it looks all wonky donkey. And then we're going to change it to overlay. All right. Came out a little bit dark and interesting. We're not going to do it to 100% of the photo. We're just kind of looking at it. I'm looking at this here and thinking about it. All right, let's do a, an adjustment here. So let's pull up the... Uh, the adjustment panel, this is the curves adjustment. We want to attach it to the layer right underneath. That's this little hee-ha. We'll crank it up. We'll pull this up a little bit, just a little bit. Good. Okay, close this. Take the original, bring it to the top, create a layer mask, brush. Now if we want to have just a little bit of this glow in the bottom area, which I think we do, just a little bit. Make it 30% or so, brush through. 
just feels a little bit more slippery down there. Okay, and that's that's a way to kind of temper that extra texture we did. Okay, so it's both smooth and textury. Plus, I love that reddish glow. Okay, very, very nice. Good. So, here we go. This is sort of the final version here. All right, let's compare it to one of the originals. Let's go back into Lightroom. And let's just say uh, reset here. So we have, you know, different versions. So we started with uh, this one. This is what came right out of the camera, minus two. Um, this is the zero, and this is the uh, plus two. All right. So we basically went from this, okay, which is the zero, I guess. If you're going to have a before, uh, this is as good as any. So this is the before shot, and then we ended up with this one. Awesome. All right, so if you just watched the YouTube one, I invite you to get the, the full version uh, of, the, of the course. I think you'll love it. Um, you know, we, we of course have a, a money back guarantee on everything. If you're not totally happy, um, our team will take care of you. We want you to make sure you're around for a long time. Or, you know, if you've been, if you've been around, you know, the website is stuck in customs and kind of been with me all along on this journey we're on together, then thank you so much. And, uh, you know, you're, your long-term uh, friendship and hanging out with me and going through this together with me has been really, really important. I want to make sure you're always happy, and this is uh, uh, this is one of the coolest things we've released lately. So I think you'll you really enjoy it and get a lot out of it. And if you are already, uh, uh, if you have already bought it and you're you're watching this and enjoying it, well, then what is coming up next, sports fans? Well, we are going to be looking at these photos, okay? and we will process uh, one of them together. And you'll see how to fix all the little movements because there are subtle movements in between each of these and this will be fun to work on. And I have a feeling that it will come out uh, quite a bit different than this one did just because, um, you know, we'll process it in a different way and it's a little bit of a different mood. You know, there's something going on, there's humans involved, so we might give it a, a different texture, a different feeling, a different style altogether, so. We'll see how that ends up. All right, cool. Thank you.